नमस्कार सबा के ये चतुर्थ ब्लग आज के जो गल्पा पढ़ते जाता हे मैन उथ टू लाइफ बम्ब्रोज बस भलो लगले निश्चय और यहां अवश्य जान गल्प सुनते चान भविष्य और लाइक शेयर सबसक्राइब कमेंट प्लिज करबें थैंक यू Ambrose Gennett Pierce was born on the 24th of June 1842 in Meigs County, Ohio, United States. He was an American short story writer, journalist, poet and American Civil War veteran. Pierce was regarded as one of the most influential journalists in the United States. and as a pioneering writer of realist fiction some of his famous works include the devil's dictionary an occurrence at owl creek bridge tales of soldiers and civilians etc he passed away in the year 1914 a man with two lives Here is the queer story of David William Duck related by himself. Duck is an old man living in Aurora, Illinois, where he is universally respected. He is commonly known, however, as Dead Duck. In the autumn of 1866, I was a private soldier of the 18th Infantry. My company was one of those stationed at Fort Phil Kearny commanded by Colonel Carrington the country is more or less familiar with the history of that garrison particularly with the slaughter by the Sioux of a detachment of 81 men and officers not one escaping through disobedience of orders by its commander the brave but reckless captain fitterman when that occurred i was trying to make my way with important dispatches to fort c f smith on the big horn as the country swarmed with hostile indians i traveled by night and concealed myself as best i could before daybreak the better to do so i went to fort armed with a henry rifle and carrying 3 days rations in my haversack for my second place of concealment i chose what seemed in the darkness a narrow canyon leading through a range of rocky hills it contained many large boulders detached from the slopes of the hills behind one of these in a clump of sage brush I made my bed for the day and soon fell asleep. It seemed as if I had hardly closed my eyes, though in fact it was near midday when I was awakened by the report of a rifle, the bullet striking the boulder just above my body. A band of Indians had trailed me and had me nearly surrounded. The shot had been fired with an execrable aim by a fellow who had caught sight of me from the hillside above. The smoke of his rifle betrayed him, and I was no sooner on my feet than he was off his and rolling down the declivity. Then I ran in a stooping posture, dodging among the clumps of sagebrush in a storm of bullets from invisible enemies. The rascals did not rise and pursue, which I thought rather queer, for they must have known by my trail that they had to deal with only one man. The reason for the inaction was soon made clear. I had not gone a hundred yards before I reached the limit of my run, the head of the gulch which I had mistaken for a cannon. it terminated in a concave breast of rock nearly vertical and destitute of vegetation in that cul-de-sac i was caught like a bear in a pen 
pursuit was needless they had only to wait they waited for two days and nights crouching behind a rock topped with a growth of mesquite and with the cliff at my back suffering agonies of thirst and absolutely hopeless of deliverance i fought the fellows at long range firing occasionally at the smoke of their rifles as they did at that of mine of course i did not dare to close my eyes at night and lack of sleep was a keen torture i remember the morning of the third day which i knew was to be my last i remember rather indistinctly that in my desperation and delirium I sprang out into the open and began firing my repeating rifle without seeing anybody to fire at and i remember no more of that fight the next thing that i recollect was my pulling myself out of a river just at nightfall i had not a rag of clothing and knew nothing of my whereabouts but all that night i traveled cold and foot sore toward the north at daybreak i found myself at fort c f smith my destination but without my dispatches the first man that i met was a surgeon named william brisco whom i knew very well you can fancy his astonishment at seeing me in that condition and my own at his asking who the devil i was dev duck i answered who should i be he stared like an owl you do look it he said and i observed that he drew a little away from me what's up he added i told him what had happened to me the day before he heard me through still staring then he said my dear fellow if you were dave duck i ought to inform you that i buried you two months ago i was out with a small scouting party and found your body full of bullet holes and newly scalped somewhat mutilated otherwise too i'm sorry to say right where you say you made your fight come to my tent and i'll show you your clothing and some letters that i took from your person the commandant has your dispatches he performed that promise he showed me the clothing which i resolutely put on the letters which i put into my pocket he made no objection then took me to the commandant who heard my story and coldly ordered brisco to take me to the guard house on the way i said bill brisco did you really and truly bury the dead body that you found in these togs sure he answered just as i told you it was dave duck all right most of us knew him and now you damned impostor you'd better tell me who you are i would give something to know i said a week later i escaped from the guard house and got out of the country as fast as i could twice i have been back seeking for that fateful spot in the hills but unable to find it